Okay. Okay, welcome back. This is our third and final um, video on focus <laughs> on enduring issues. So let's go here. Okay, so you should be able to see me and my screen. I hope. Okay. Okay. I'm doing this right here. Yeah. Okay. So when you open the file from the Google Classroom, you have the article. We annotated some of the article in class. You would finish annotating it. Remember, it's called The Unwinnable War, and it's a review essay. And it's America's Blind Spots in Afghanistan by Laurel Miller. In this review essay, she also inserts a second text. It's called The Fifth Act, America's End in Afghanistan by Elliot Ackerman. He um, is a war veteran and he was there for almost two decades um, it's good that she inserts this text because this review essay, it isn't only demonstrative of enduring understandings, but it's it's exactly what you have to write. It's like the epitome of what you have to write, but it takes you through how to endure the issue. So I understand that this is long. Like, I get it. Like, this is an adult magazine. Like, this is beyond college. Like it's, it's thorough, but it's, it's chock full. Like even if you read one a month, you can't get from here. For example, like if you went to like Wikipedia or something, it's not, you can't get the quality and the caliber of the history and they tell it, she, they illustrate it. They tell it, sorry, they write it as a review essay. They write it as if you're just reading a story, like as if you're in ELA but you're reading nonfiction. Okay, let me just scroll down here. A lot of things going on. Okay, so we read this, most of it, not all of it. Okay. Okay, so this is, for example, trying on me let me get rid of that go down You know what, honestly, take, you know what, we're just going to, uh-oh, oh my God. And this is my life. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. So, sorry. Okay, so this is what, I'm going to explain this. Okay. So first you have to explain the conflict. So you would write something like this. In volume 101, number six of the Foreign Affairs Magazine, the November-December 2022 review essay entitled The Unwinnable War, America's Blind Spots in Afghanistan, written by Laurel Miller, is inclusive of the four enduring issues, conflict, I guess I'm going to make it bigger, the desire for power, um, interconnectedness, and impacts on the environment. That stated, conflicts is the issue that dominates the above-mentioned text as it prevails and endures rampant throughout the article. 
and in real-time event history. Specifically during the August 2021 Af Afghan evacuation, published by the Council on Foreign Relations, like it's a legit text, Laurel Miller's piece on pages 174 to 180 endures a 20 plus year conflict between the Middle Eastern pioneer nation of Afghanistan, located on the continent of Asia. Remember, it's middle, it's in the Middle East, but the Middle East is shared between Northern Africa, the continent of Af Africa, Northern Africa, um, and Asia, and the United States the superpower of the Western Front located on the continent of North America. Since 2001, the United States forces have laid physical claim to Afghanistan as to be privy to their quotidian comings and goings. However, all of this in the name of, however, all of this is done in the name of counterterrorism. The United States has never, has never, and will never indulge the Taliban, as our government's mantra is to never negotiate with terrorists. After spending two decades in Afghanistan, the Taliban has returned to Afghanistan without warning or pretense, allegedly. As a result, U.S. military personnel, innocent Afghan men, women and children, and other people in and around Kabul, Afghanistan, had to be evacuated over 10 days' time. The Taliban is returned, the threat undeniable, and all that we built in Afghanistan over the past 20 years is gone. It's as if 20 years did not transpire and had no effect on the enemy whatsoever. Where did the United States go wrong? The United States has more than lost the war in Afghanistan, the hopes of humanity and or a humane race outliving the resurgence of a global pariah, have been dashed from North America to the Middle East. The United States has lost this battle of nearly a quarter century. That stated, innocent civilian Afghans have lost their home as being forced to flee, there's a mistake, their country, as being forced to flee their country, has led to being displaced and or living the life of a refugee slash displaced person. So, okay, basically this is what happened. This is what it said. So in 2001, right? And this is what I write here. We're enduring an issue over 20 years, which is perfect because that's how you're, that's how you build understanding of what the issue is and how that conflict affected our history uh, in the past present and in, and in the future like how it will affect us in the future sorry okay so for the second paragraph you're going to explain the conflict's lifespan over time as per its connection and or importance to the trajectory of global history so i i explain it here after osama bin laden right the founder of the militant islamist organization al-qaeda professed to being the proud mastermind behind the September 11th, 2001 World Trade Center bombing in the financial epicenter of Manhattan, located in New York City. The United States government hunted bin Laden and the country he was most closely affiliated, excuse me, and tied to, um, which is the Middle Eastern metropole of Afghanistan. Uh, Afghanistan. So while innocent, hardworking men and women most likely burned to death and or committed suicide by throwing themselves out windows as the Twin Towers collapsed, this was a result. This was a result of them being on fire before the first tower and then the second burned to the ground. Osama bin Laden evaded captivity by... By um, you know, it's okay. By hiding betwixt and dodging between off the grid compounds and underground bunkers in Taliban territory, the countries of Afghanistan and Pakistan, located on the continent of Asia, again geography, the man and anti-American terrorist network of followers in Afghanistan, Osama, situated and active in terrorist pursuits of countries with governments that emphasize freedom, democracy, and a capitalist economy and equality via civil rights under federal law. Sorry, it's, it's a little verbose. 
Bin Laden was operating within and alongside the Afghans, scheming about how to launch an assault on freedom, liberty, and justice for all as early as 1984. So, okay, basically, okay, so oh, that man, Osama Bin Laden, um, like he's like a terrorist. He, um, he's from Saudi Arabia and he's independently wealthy. And he um, is what we call an Islamic fundamentalist. So it means that he ascribes to um, the Islamic faith, the Muslim religion. However, he's an extremist. He, um, you know, thinks that he is God and he speaks for Allah and Muhammad, the prophet Muhammad, which he does not. So basically what he does is he's like, I need to get the United States' attention. Like, I really need their attention. And even though I should get a job, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to move from Saudi Arabia, where I have lots of money. I'm going to take my money um, that I didn't work for. And I'm going to move to Afghanistan because Afghanistan is more central to the Middle East. And I'm going to build an underground network and I'm going to um, be the, I'm going to start, I'm going to de uh, develop, I'm going to discover a, um, a military um, terrorist, terrorist faction called Al Qaeda. And basically what we're going to do is I'm going to communicate um, in Afghanistan to other countries like Pakistan in the Middle East. And we're going to wage a war on freedom because the United States, who do they think they are? Um, not following Sharia law, like letting women walk in the streets without the burqa, without the face covering. A capitalist, free democracy, laissez-faire government, equality for all. Oh my gosh. You know, they have no right. Like they just have no right to profit um, and to, you know, make money and to compete in the global society. So that is not what God wants. That's not what Allah says. So I am going to um, train um, the Islamic youth, um, the following of that which he has, like that ascribe to terrorist <laughs> Uh, uh, like living the life of a terrorist, I'm going to train suicide bombers to fly planes into the symbol of freedom, uh, the two twin towers in New York City at the World Trade Center. And I'm going to do this um, because I want my attack on freedom and liberty to be epic and to linger. And I need the United States to know that not only do I exist and, you know, I'm God, but also that they are doing wrong under Allah. And um, as a result, they need to die. That's basically like that dude, right? So, okay. So the, the two towers in 2001 on 9-11, they collapse. Obviously, Duh, after the attack, um, he also attacked the Pentagon that day, like other places, just not as as detrimental. Um, the United States were like, oh my God, like, who do you think you are? We're going to come get you. So in 2001, the United States military occupies the country, Afghanistan. Because we are looking for Osama bin Laden because we need to avenge the unnecessarily unnecessary deaths of the hardworking, innocent men and women who were working at the World Trade Center. So like, for example, my uncle Jerry um, died on 9-11. He, um, like, he wasn't bothering anybody. Like, he is a male, like a mail carrier. So his job is to cart like mail and packages and messages from like one office and or one uh, floor to another and also betwixt and between tower, tower one and tower two. 
So he, he died that day. So here's the thing, like, instead of being caught on, like, oh, I hate these people or like, oh, some Bin Laden, like, or instead of like getting angry or like crying in the corner, like I, I get that uncle Jerry burned to death, but there's nothing I can do about that. So what can I do to help prevent this from happening again? Like, how do I endure the issue? How do I internalize the issue? so that I actually care about it, so that I figure out my role in it. So the first thing that I, that I did was I thought I had to rationalize why anybody would do that. So it's like, if you feel like, oh, oppressed, or you feel like, gosh, like that country, like they're so free and easy. That is just not right. Like if you just hate on like freedom because you feel like it, and some people do, that's what a terrorist is. So the United States military moves into Afghanistan to occupy Afghanistan. So in order to um, fight the Taliban, so the Taliban, they are a terrorist organization they also believe in terrorism meaning terrorism is like you make change via terror like that's your theme (laughs) so you don't like hey how are you can we have a conversation like it's going to be a difficult conversation but we're going to get through it and we're going to be on the same page at the end yeah they don't do that they don't (laughs) they don't care they're not trying to hear nobody's voice they're trying to hear um, they're trying to just, you know, say like, okay, you know, you're not living right by Allah. That's not true. Like, that's not Allah's message. They made that up. It's not in the Quran. Like, there's nothing about terrorism in the Quran. It's like these little like haters, but they're super smart, right? So not only is this a conflict that is happening in Afghanistan between the United States military again versus the Taliban okay we want to get the Taliban a terrorist group who did also if they are responsible for attacking for the 2001 um, World Trade Center bombings we need to not only get them out of Afghanistan we don't want them coming back in so what does that mean? That means you need to live there. You need to um take men and women from the military, homeland security. You need to take them from the United States on a plane to Afghanistan. And you need to help them get situated in and around the military base and in and around Afghanistan. Because it isn't enough that we eliminate the Taliban from Afghanistan, the presence of the Taliban. We also need to make sure that they don't return. So what does that mean? We have to help Afghanistan set up a more stable government that um, that allows them to remain independent after we retreat, after we withdraw our forces so that if the Taliban decides to come back, they can um, combat them. Okay. 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 So let's just pick up from here. So in a nutshell, after 20 years of occupying and trying to control Afghan citizens daily lives, so as to ensure that the Taliban never again regain the traction they had in 2001, the mission failed and the war against the Taliban in Afghanistan lost great so this is true okay so this is like the frustration let me just because like i wrote this but sometimes you have to talk it out right first okay so basically the united states right took soldiers people military personnel cia um special service operations people and they lived in afghanistan for 20 years from 2001 to 2021 around 2014 the taliban was like listen first of all who do you think you are (laughs) secondly we're stronger than you we have money from countries that you've never even been to (laughs) we have power 
because not only does he have the world ascribed to the Islamic faith, which is wonderful, but we have, we are um, convincing people, the youth, mostly the youth, like young people in Pakistan and Afghanistan who have decided that their future career is in terrorism with like lies with the Taliban, um, which is dangerous because they can think we, um, we are going to spread what we deem is the word of God because we're coming back. Oh no, United States superpower, Westerners, whatever. Who do you think you are? Excuse me. We are not, um, like we are not done. Afghanistan is the perfect jumping off platform for an underground network of terrorist sleeper cells to exist. Um, they don't want to lose that that positioning because it's it's central to where they need to be. Yeah. Okay. So in 2014, the Taliban starts making headway in um taking over Afghanistan again, even though the United States troops are still there. We are like slowly withdrawing our troops because we have been in this country a very long time. We're not doing a good job of occupying this country. And it's like not a big country. Um, The issue is that while it took um, the United States 10 years to catch and capture and kill Osama bin Laden, we found him in Pakistan. He was hiding there. Okay, fine, no problem. We go back to Afghanistan and, you know, people want to come home. Like they miss their families. Like not everybody want to live in the desert, you know, like in their life. The issue is that the Taliban, like they, the Taliban, it's like they almost exist like before us. So how do I explain it? If you have people who are terrorists and they they drive in planes into buildings to get your attention, like not going to hold you, you got mine. I'm listening. What do you want to say? I'm all ears. What is it that you want? What can I do for you so that you don't go out your way scheming like a crazy person? like flying planes into buildings because you feel that I should give you a voice. You know what? Take your time. Speak. We don't do that. This country, we don't negotiate with terrorists. Here's the thing. Yes, they're terrorists. Okay, evil, evil exists. But they're people. They're human beings. Like these men are very powerful, young and old. And whatever it is that they are teaching of that which is um, hatred for our country, freedom, liberty, justice, equality, civil rights, um, women having jobs, that really upsets them. Whatever they're saying, however they're saying it, their pedagogy is motivating people to join up. So if you have a faction of that which is evil or you know kill, you know they kill people in order to <laughs> to send a message if they have something to say like they want to seat at the table they want to talk to you they want to negotiate with the united states absolutely i'm there no problem what do you need how can i serve you i'm listening because i cannot i cannot uh, th- I don't know what it is that I'm facing. Like, first of all, Afghanistan, I don't live there. Middle East, I don't live there. I don't have information on them. I don't have longevity, sustainability. I don't have exposure. If I'm going to go into that country and I'm going to kick this terrorist force out, I better know how to do it. But it isn't just about guns and weapons and bullying tactics and threats. 
this war is very difficult and very long and the conflict is very i never seen a conflict like this like i just never seen a conflict like this like the taliban they are quite a force they are very powerful we don't see them as westerners like in where we live that does not mean that they don't exist that does not mean that they are building their next threat, planning their next attack. The way they teach people, the way they speak, like the youth elect, they volunteer to join. They have a huge following. We do not understand them at all. We don't know them. And we, we are rude to them because we don't want to talk with them. So not only do we not acknowledge them before 2001, 9-11, we insist on still silencing them, not, not talking to them, not trying to communicate with them 20 years after. And as a result because we don't understand what it is that we're trying to combat, they win. We try, we, we spend 20 years in Afghanistan bothering these poor civilian people, trying to set up a government of that which they cannot sustain. And then we evacuate and it's so bad. It's so abrupt. The Taliban, they now, it's, it's as if we were never there. It's like time wasted. It's as if 20 years passed and we didn't do nothing. Like that's a lifetime. Like we didn't get anything done. The Taliban take over Afghanistan again. They still, they are still in power today. So the United States, we spent a lot of money, a lot of time in Afghanistan, in another country, like carrying guns, like wielding weapons, you know, whatever it is that we do aside from bother people but during that 20 years we didn't do no talking we didn't have any difficult conversations we did not engage with the enemy we did not try to understand the enemy's mindset and or their ideology we learned nothing from them it's as if you let it's as if you let 20 years of your life pass and you didn't read no book you didn't learn any you didn't glean any life lessons you didn't um, read or write or um, study math. You just stood in a country with a gun running your mouth, struggling, like English is your first language, but you seem to struggle with that. Not learning about your enemy, not learning about the country of that which your enemy inhabits and why. Not bothering to get to know nobody. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's why we lost, which is a shame. Because we did not bother to understand the mindset so that we could change it and shut that down. You can't, the way they um, use planes and force and weapons of mass destruction to bomb the World Trade, the Twin Towers, we went into Afghanistan and we shot them up. We did the same thing. Like anybody can pick up a gun and like shoot it. Like, okay, wait, what's that? What am I shooting at? Okay, that's a person. Anybody can do that. But what people cannot do and don't do well is communicate. And that's what the Taliban does really well. Their network of communication is constant. It is they, they have consistency. So they have a following because the following can rely on their counsel, on their messages, on their words of advice. If you say something enough times to somebody who doesn't have a job or a career because of the state of their country, the state of their economy, and they have energy and they want to be purposeful, they're going to start to listen. So whether you're preaching a message of terror or hate, that message is reaching people 
who by our standards don't matter or are not important or are not significant. You, you cannot say, you cannot make a hasty generalization, right? As a country, I'm not going to negotiate with terrorists. What does that mean? They just bombed two buildings. Like, like what? What? What could they? What could they do that's worse? <laughs> a lot. Maybe give them a seat at the table. Negotiate with them. Like innocent people have already died. What have you got to lose? But we don't do that, and that's a, that's why we lost. So. If you walk around thinking, well, I know best, I'm the superpower, nobody can question me, you don't learn, you don't make moves. Like guns and weapons, those are props. Anybody and everybody has those. That's not what this war is. Terror terrorism is intellectual. They're smart. They speak English better than me. Um, they are learned. When you grow up in a society that does not have an infrastructure where everybody is going to work every day and it's consistent, like you have a lot of downtime and you have a lot of reflective time. You can either read and educate yourself as Osama bin Laden did, right? Um. Or you can sit around and, you know, let the time pass. So this Taliban, this um, communication, this network, it reaches young men who have energy and want to work and contribute and want to have a purpose. But their country, maybe Pakistan, maybe Afghanistan, it does not have the infrastructure of that which permits them to maybe have that career. Yeah, or to own anything or to have a family. We don't have any money, right? Or to go to school. The Taliban creates a safe haven, a sanctuary for these oppressed and marginalized groups. The only difference between the Afghan, Afghan and or Pakistani youth is that mostly they ascribe to the religion of the Islamic religion and or the Muslim faith. Again, the Taliban, they are extremists. They do not represent Muslim Islam. Islam means peace. It actually, it actually also, I'm sorry, it actually means submission. But you're not it you're not submitting to like a man or like a boss like you're submitting to Allah it's submission under Allah so like for example I'm sorry it's difficult for me to explain so for example um, if I am Muslim and I am of the Islamic faith I am not going to fear the unknown because I know that Allah and the Prophet Muhammad and his wife Khadijah though, and his best friend Abubakar, they're helping me. They're watching over me. So whatever happens in my life, I'm going to do the best I can to be the best person I can be and to always do the right thing and to not do wrong because Allah will protect me. So it's submission to Allah not submission to Osama bin Laden, not submission to Al-Qaeda, not submission to the Taliban. Those, it, though, that terrorist faction, they are so, um, they are really extremists. And they think that they're Allah and they're not. They're wrong. But it's very difficult to convince them. But also, in terms of the United States, have we really tried? See, this is, this is a problem now because now 20 years have transpired and we have nothing to show for it in Afghanistan. 
and the, the poor civilian Afghans who are innocent, innocent men, women, women and children, they are right back worse off than where they started in 2001. So what good have we done in the Middle East? Because we don't care. We don't get it. We don't, we don't read. We're not reflective. We don't think critically enough, but they do. They're ready. They're ready. They're so good in terms of literacy and ELA and math and geography, location. And um, they're so good at speaking and communicating that um, that even when you don't see their face and you just hear their message, like, or the internet or the radio or whatever, people are moved to ascribe to this Islamic Emirate state, this movement. Young people, they want to be a part of the Taliban because it gives them a sense of purpose and structure and they need that. So to not open the lines of communication, to not show that you care, show remorse for however they feel, but also an affirmative stance on, well, we cannot act this way. We need to coexist. What do you recommend? Okay, you want to you want to live in Afghanistan. Well, what is it that you need that we can give you so that you stop this foolishness, shenanigan, evil, and you can put those energies into something more productive, so people don't like die. Like, what is the issue? How can we help you? Because this cannot continue. We never say that. The United States. Like, you cannot do like that in life. Like, you have to have uncomfortable conversations with people because if you don't and you stop communicating, then they drive planes into buildings and then you are at a loss because how do you control that? You can't go back in time. So that's what this article is about, this review essay. It is enduring understanding of a conflict of that which still today exists in Afghanistan. We, we don't know the answer. We ran. The United States evacuated. They have evacuated as many um, civilian Afghans over 10 days. And so also troops, right? CIA personnel. But the Taliban... <laughs> They're there, like they're full force. And we did not, over 20 years, take advantage of the opportunity to communicate with them. All they have been doing over 20 years is communicating um, uh, via an underground network that I cannot make this up, has better internet service than we do in this country. <laughs> like seriously, like they're very technologically advanced, like they're very savvy. So if they're communicating hundreds of thousands of youth who are like mobilized and motivated to like, to be a part of this movement of that which is against freedom, of that which occupies Afghanistan, of that which um, pushes the Quran, that pushes Islam, that pushes the Muslim faith to the extreme. Like, how do you not, you have to communicate with them because they're they're convincing people that the West is getting it wrong. And the way they are convincing people to solve this problem and or to be heard is through violence and like murder, like attacks. So from my perspective, like the United States is at fault. They're lazy. 
the policy, the foreign policymakers, the political on the ground, the grounds roots forces, the strategists, they got it wrong. You can't just bring like trigger happy. I'm not saying like everyone, but you cannot just like put soldiers into Afghanistan, like with with only military training. Like, just like they need to, you cannot, it's not enough to know how to use a gun, like just like shoot the person in front of you, because that's a human being. Maybe ask them why they're standing there. <laughs> like, you cannot do that. Like, like, what's the point of flying from the United States to Afghanistan, leaving your family? But then when you're in Afghanistan, like, you don't leave your block. Like, you don't learn nothing. You don't go talk to the locals. Gee, what do you want? What's going on? Like, what kind of problems does the Taliban give you? How can we help you? Like, like how do they do that? Like, do you know? And you help? Like, we, like, no communication. So that's a very, um, that's a very rude, like, that's a huge rude awakening. And it's embarrassing to our country. Because we have money and resources. We spend a fortune. Like people were away from their families trying to make this country better. And they, they literally established nothing. Like it's as if we were never there. That's how strong the Taliban are. Because they care more about how to govern Afghanistan than we do. We don't care about the Afghans. They do. They govern them very strict under Sharia law. We don't govern our own selves at all. Like, you cannot do that. It's not enough to just go in and shoot people. <laughs> like, you have to, there has to be a strategy. You know, like, you have to have an understanding of that which speaks to how you speak on and or articulate why it is that you're there your purpose and what information are you going to glean from innocent civilian Afghans over time? How are you going to then from Afghanistan do what the Taliban did, but instead of network and communicate with people in a negative fashion, you're going to network and communicate with them in order to change the mindset in order to convince them <laughs> and or prove to them that, listen, we're not the enemy. Can't you do something else with your time? Ain't you tired? But we don't we don't initiate that. And as a superpower, that's embarrassing. Like that's shameful. So that's what this is about. Um, this is this is excellent magazine. This one, this really excellent magazine. Like you read one of these, you're good for a month. Because it has everything in there. So they have they have both Laurel Miller in this article or review essay has both endured the understanding for you, but so also modeled for you how you should write it. You don't have to write as much as I did. I just have to get it out. Okay. Let's just read the ending. The West was hoodwinked, not by suicide bombers this time, as we were on 9-11. Neither the physical presence of such Talib terrorist leaders enforcing and preaching the adherence to Sharia law and the reinforcement of a reigning patriarchal society. Cause it's like the women, like they have to have a chaperone when they go out under Taliban rule. Um, the women have to wear the burqa. The burqa is the long, it's like a long dress. Like you see the eyes. They have to cover their feet. Um, the career of the lady is not really beyond the home. Like it's very domestic. Um, like the man is in charge. Uh, there's a curfew. That's that's a lot. However, try to like see it from the Afghan point of view. While they did not uh, want the Taliban to govern them, they didn't want us there either. Like, what did we do? Nothing. The United States shamefully fought the enemy too long and yet not hard enough, however lazily, and thus the Taliban and their manifestation of all that is right, 
evil, prevails and thrives via the mindsets of a growing mass of young fundamentalists. The life lesson the United States should have already gleaned along with aforementioned retired war vet Elliot Ackerman, he wrote that book, is that just because you wield an intimidating sword doesn't mean you are doing so wisely. Just because you got a big gun doesn't mean you know how to use it or why you're using it. So what's the point of having it? Maybe just stay home. Like, honestly, we should have stood home for 20 years because we got it wrong. We got it wrong. Like, how do you do that? How do you do that? Like, how do you get that wrong? Oh, because you think you know it all. Okay, so you must know best. So you, you can't learn. So you're not going to learn from anybody else. How can you win this war? <laughs> How can we win a war we don't know anything about? <laughs> okay, I cannot make this up. Just going to reiterate. In Afghanistan, the Taliban, if they run a very tight ship, have better internet speed, better internet service than us in the West and we're the superpower. Do you, do you see what I'm saying here? <laughs> Like, they don't play. We can learn from them. God forbid, God forbid, listen, hey, you know, you killed some people, please, please, please don't do that again. Like, what, what, what do you want? Or what do you think? Like, okay, fine. You want to live in Afghanistan? We need to come to some compromise because, you know, you, you know, you have half the population working and the other half not working. And these curfews are a little ridiculous. So let's, can you work with us, please? Anybody can pick up a gun and shoot blindly at the image in front of them. However, they will eventually tire and run out of bullets. Um, sorry. Okay. So if, if you are shooting at somebody and you fail to recognize that the enemy you are targeting is a human being, right? That's a commonality, just like you and me, like we're all humans. So if you can shoot them, maybe don't shoot them yet. Maybe talk to them, like words are free. <laughs> As a result, it is the mindset of each Taliban soldier. We never, we never bother to learn because we never bother to talk to them penetrate deeply and ultimately debunk and destroy in purpose and practice like we never bothered to like okay so this is what the taliban preaches like the what's it called the mullah the mullah is the teacher this is what they're they're teaching you okay so the reason why this is wrong and we should not live our life like this is because of this so um if you come to afghanistan <laughs> Um, the United States is in power as of, you know, we are occupying Afghanistan, but listen, we will ensure that you will have a job for 20 years. Come on down. We have a job for you. Like you have a place in our society. Like, don't be afraid. Like we're American. We're big. We have guns, but we have a job for you. We read and write as well. Like, <laughs> like anything, <laughs> literally anything to do the same thing that they're doing, like attract the youth, get the the youth to buy into your ideology so that they don't turn out to be killers like like a suicide bomber like oh yes that's the career for me right up oh, put me down me me i want that i want that job like that's not no that's not a career that's not how we that's not a role in society like, so let's help these people the masses they're they, they have energy like let's help them do the right thing like, why would we just hang out there for 20 years? Like, and not do that. I don't, lazy, like uninterested, don't care. Again, again, like if, so like if, if black lives don't matter, if Afghan lives don't matter, if the lives of terrorists don't matter, because they do, my life don't matter. So now we're faced with the same conflict. So now, like, do you waste another 20 years getting it wrong? Or do we do it differently? Do we get it right this time? Oh my God, what's it gonna be? The United States took the idiot's way out of a war on intelligence and deep-seated inspiring Islamic fundamentalist pedagogy. For example, it's as if the military showed up to a 20-year-long exam in Kabul, Afghanistan, 
<laughs> Yet they never bothered to study and or internalize the timeless material and integral information crucial to one's enduring understanding of any political entity's power of breach. So it's like basically you roll up to the exam and you sit in a chair for 20 years, but you don't bring no pencil. And you forget your glasses on the bus. But you got a gun, you got a gun, yes, right? But you can't read nothing. So what did you do for 20 years? You existed to exist. You got you got tricked. Taliban gonna catch you. Just because you lazy, they coming. Like Taliban, they have intelligence and work ethic. Uh-oh. And they have a message too. Oh my gosh, guys, we got to top that. How are we going to top that? Okay, let's create some jobs and let's invite, let's invite, let's invite everybody who doesn't have one. Like, let's just try to get people working so that they have purpose because to sit and listen all day to this, the terrorist preach is not, that's not the way. The denouement or conclusion of Laurel Miller's thought-provoking review essay, inclusive of an enduring issue yet to resolve the global conflict. How does the world wage war effectively on the Taliban and ensure a swift eternal victory? Because you want it to be everlasting, like... At this point in history, evil is winning. <laughs> so evil is winning over good. What should the United States do to finish the war they started in favor of a global community free from terrorists and a lingering terrorist mindset? Important lessons. There is a limit to what American money and willpower can achieve. And the best way to avoid having to get out of an unwinnable war is to avoid getting into one maybe start with that conversation have that difficult conversation maybe put that gun down you know um i should have quoted that that was on page 180 okay so this is how you endure understanding of an issue you have to read like a story about the issue of that which is accurate and well written so that you can understand before your birth what it is that's going on with this issue like who are the taliban like what's going on then like so we we read the the review essay but it takes time because it's an essay and then we write about it. like the conflict the conflict's lifespan um how did how did the conflict um create change in people in um it, amongst people and their environment so this conflict is not resolved. It still prevails. The Taliban, they're like, they're up and running, man. They're powerful. And we're like, <laughs> we ran, like we ran from them. Oh my God, evacuate, hurry up. So you know what it is? I think that you cannot, like, I think that we are never going to erase terrorism because you will always have good and evil. And that's a part of that. It's just like a part of like the human condition because we're flawed. So it's like, it's not that you're looking to erase evil or erase terrorism. You're looking to rationalize it. And then with words and ideas and time and communication, shut it down. Like, it, it doesn't have anything to do with guns, really. As much as it has to do with... Um, purpose and the, the philosophy of life. And why we should ascribe to one religion or and or one idea versus another. Like the gun is very like heavy and it weighs you down and it doesn't talk back and it doesn't have a personality and it's very easy to use and it's very uh, quick <laughs> to eliminate. So in the digital era of communication and we are also, so also are we in a post, a quasi post pandemic era 
I think that we need to do a better job of giving different people around the world a voice who don't have one so that they can see that Islam and the Muslim faith have absolutely nothing in common with terrorism, the Taliban, and or uh, former Al-Qaeda. So we can either teach it the, the Islam the right way, or we can do a combination of preaching the religion and being positive on that, but also um, um, communicating, communicating with the with the Middle East, with pockets of peoples that are marginalized. They are of color. They are Middle Eastern. Sorry. They are young. They are bored. They're poor. They're intelligent because they have a lot of time in the day to sit and think. They are not well educated. They are forgotten. Um, you know how in the, the Statue of Liberty it says, Give me your poor, your downtrodden, your oppressed. Give me those people. And um give me those people because I want them. Give me those people. Let them contribute to our great nation because the underdogs of society, there's a survival instinct. There's a, a, a rigor. There's a work ethic there. There's a stamina. There's a perseverance. They don't give up. They don't give up. Um, let's help this part of the world Let's help the youth mobilize and think for themselves. Let's see what we can do for them in Afghanistan. If the Taliban have been so successful with Afghanistan, like this communication network, using Afghanistan as a platform, because it's a central kind of platform, then we should use the same one because we're not doing any good in the West in the United States. So like words are free. Let's figure it out. Okay, if they speak English better than us and they speak like 20 languages, okay, let's learn some Arabic, y'all. Let's learn some Pashtun. Let's figure this out. <laughs> like let's learn some Urdu so that we can communicate with people who hate us. Because we have things that they don't. So let us preach and teach these young, they're, they're, they're in a sense in an inner city. Yeah. Let us preach and teach to this youth. Be because if anybody's going to change the mindset of the Taliban and or decide not to ascribe to this terrorist philosophy way of life it's gonna be them we're not gonna change it from here and guns are completely trivial because they're brilliant and they're self-made and they're motivated but they're motivated in the wrong direction so let's try to get it right we're not glossing over things with guns i'm not saying we don't need them but could you just like, we don't need them. We had them for 20 years. Nothing, they didn't work. We don't need them. <laughs> we don't need them. We can communicate without them. But do we want to? Are we willing to learn? Are we willing to listen? If you don't want it, so if you say, I'm not going to negotiate with terrorists, terrorists not going to negotiate with you. So we're back where we started at a stalemate.
Okay, so it's guns, bombs, and planes, then, right? Okay, gotcha. Ridiculous. We can do better. Okay, I thought of this quote while I was reading this. My God, this video is so long. Okay. Um, you can kill the revolutionary, but you can't kill the revolution. And that's from Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton said that. He said that um, he was a Black Panther during the Civil Rights Movement, like the 1960s in Chicago, Illinois. And um, like he said that. So it's like the United States, they're like, okay, well, we can just kill Osama bin Laden. But you, but you did not address the mindset and the teachings and the preach of that which people have internalized. You haven't done anything intellectually. Like, like why not? Because <laughs> you're lazy and you don't know the answer. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. See, like the mullah, like mullah Omar, he's a terrorist. Um, and he's like a people really like him. He's like a very good teacher, I guess. He's very smart. Like people want to learn from this guy. So it's like you see, like education, like something so simple, like the teacher. Education is literally at the heart of sustainable change. And what do we do? We don't care about inner city youth. We send big men and ladies with guns to Afghanistan thinking that they're going to get it right. And literally 20 years, they how do you get something wrong for 20 years? That's bugging. Like, I would just, that's embarrassing. I would just die on the ground. Like, how do you, I don't get it. I don't get it. So for 20 years, what'd you do? Nothing. I stared at the wall. Like, I don't get it. Wait, did you pick up any of the languages there? No, I just spoke the, whatever English I speak. Like, it doesn't make any sense. 20 years. 20 years is a lifetime. It's crazy. So it's like, maybe we like, hey, Mula Omar, would you, let me, let me get that curriculum. Can I roll up on that syllabus? <laughs> so I can see what you're teaching. So I can understand how to shut that now you know how to negate what it is that you're teaching after i try to understand why it is that what you're saying is so powerful because who wants to be a hater so that's important okay i hope this helps i really hope this helps okay thank you period four miss clifford enduring issues example i love this love this i do have this translated into spanish um, I have to do this whole video over in Spanish and I'm praying right now. Okay, children, love you. See you later. This is the textbook magazine. Focus DeVito.